Hello everyone, this is David with the F&B Railroad. Glad to have you back. In this episode, we're going to do layout expansion update number 35. And in this update, I continue on with my view blocks that I was making, both of them, the left side and the right side. Um, I added a, a stone arch to the right side. I think it looks good. And then from there, I move on to working on the coal mine. And after that, I do a scratch build for some car bumpers. So without me talking anymore or, I don't know, just standing here looking silly, uh, let's get into this. I got a, now that I got track laid down and wired and in place, soldered and all that, I need to do some painting of the rails. So I'm going to paint using this chalk acrylic paint. Here I gotta fill in tie ends right here on this switch because this had a switch motor on it and I took it off. So now I gotta fill in the tie ends. And to do so, I take the scrap pieces of ties that I cut off of track and I cut off the ends, saving the bike detail. And then I super glue them to the side of the switch. Okay, now I gotta paint the rails and I'm using a testers enamel rust and I'm just gonna paint the rails. And now for the side that I really can't see Check it with a mirror. This is a ladies compact. Works great. So 
So what I want to show you that I've made up is this bump stop from my end scale railroad. This is going to be at the end of the tracks in the mine. And I'll show you how I made this quick and easy little bump stop. Let's see, what did I do? That was 11 feet. So I measured ties over one, two, three, four. I measured over four ties and it came out to 11 feet. So I made my base 11 feet long. I made my base from this right here, 10 thousandths by 80, 000, eight, uh, 180 thousandths. So I have a piece here and we'll cut this. Now this is very thin stuff, so it flexes and gets out of shape easily. But we're gonna cut this at 11 feet. there nip it off that's our base the next piece is this piece here which is a piece of channel and that channel is this right here 263 100 thousandths channel and that piece I made seven feet tall. So we've got a piece of channel right here and we're going for seven feet. So there's those two pieces. Now what I did is I went and put a piece on the rails so I could see what it was. Oops. Piece on the rails, on the ties I should say, not the rails. And I marked the third tie. Let me just double check that. Yes, that's what I did. I marked the third tie. And then all I did was take the channel. And I put a dab of glue and I glued it with the ears of the channel facing backwards. This goes down here. I'll get this up off the mat so it doesn't glue to the mat. I should really be using a piece of uh, wax paper or something down but we got this glued you can see it so it's gluing and then I went for these side pieces and these pieces right here those were there we go so those pieces are 30 by 30 number 131 and we cut two pieces at 11 feet because that's the length of the actually I'm gonna cut them a little longer
all centered. Like straight up and down. And I'm gonna get myself a piece of wax paper. Okay, now that I have a piece of wax paper and I have my 30 by 30 pieces cut, I take my glue, run it down the side, drop these on. One side. Down the other. as straight as you can with the three sixteenths piece that is underneath. Now it's melting the plastic underneath as well, so I'll pick it up. Everybody in pretty much. I'll let that dry up. So this is what it's looking like right now. You got your 30 by 30s on the bottom piece, your channels running up. And now I believe I cut these pieces at seven feet. And I did not. Pieces. So, this I do cut quite to size. there and then this is pretty simple take my piece I'm setting it up with the bevels going down in put my glue Put the end of the bevels. Put it out inside the channel iron. Mm, you know, that could be a little longer. So, let's set that aside. 
to go for 9 feet. Check to make sure I didn't make a mistake here. No, that's right. Five feet tall. Or whatever that was called. Alright, so and so I don't waste a lot more plastic. Let's just check to see how this is gonna go. Yeah, that's better. So they weren't eight, they were nine. An angle, turn it around. Alright, let's try this again. Tweezers. Blue. Inside the channel and against the roof. Inside the channel, against the base. Next piece. Inside the channel. Side channel at the top, touching the base and the bottom. And this one doesn't seem wrong. What's going on here? Well, it seems to be a hair short. Oh, let's do it again. again. So for this time I'm going 10 feet. There's 10. Okay, and that one's here too long. It's a better long than short. There we go. Blue. And fit it in. Now, two of them just fit inside the channel. And I bring these to the outer other square bar that we put on earlier. As you can see, they just, just fit inside and then I pushed them to the outside. So that makes our supports. And if you want, well, I ain't gonna do it right now. So that's the basis of the the stop. Now what I used was some forty thousandths by one or by one point point one eight eight 
or 316s. And what I did is I used my I used another 316s, this happens to be the 10,000s. And I squared it up with the 40,000s and I squared it. start again. Let's try this a different way. as our guide. And we'll use our square. Okay, so now it's 3 sixteenths by 3 sixteenths. We're along, along it and we're going to scribe it. And we break it off. And then I did a second piece. This time, on smaller. that a few times, break it off, and now, here again, I'm going to go approximately one millimeter smaller, like this. And there, that makes a smaller square. And the smaller square sit on top of the bigger square. And I figured that would be like a rubber pad on the steel backer. So, just put a drop of glue. with it to square it up and center it. Once, it's, once the glue starts to grab, it's not too bad. You can get it moved around a little bit. Get it somewhat centered up. Maybe get a little, put a little pressure down on it. And that's the pad. Now this, easily enough, we get glued on here. And that makes the bump. So I try and center it. And now what I'll do is I'll go back 
Come on, stand up. It's fun working with all this small stuff in end scale, I'll tell you. Go back and trim off my excess. There you go, trim off the excess. Now we have two bump stops. And then I went and painted it yellow and then weathered it down and of course painted the smaller pad black. So Yeah, you got a black bumper. And now this one. It's all white, but when we paint it up, we'll have a black bumper. Now we got another bumper for the railroad. And I thought it was pretty simple, pretty easy. Just some class, some polystyrene from Evergreen scale models. And it's stuff I've been using to do other work. It was just scrap pieces, so I used them, and made up a quick bump stop for the end of the line for the uh, coal mine. All right, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. You saw scratch building can be a little bit difficult sometimes, but it's all good. It doesn't cost me much of anything. It's plastic I had, and it's just little bits and pieces. It's not much at all. So this was uh, what I got done for this episode, episode number 35. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate everybody who watches, everybody who leaves me a comment, everybody who gives me a thumbs up. And uh, for those who haven't seen it before and you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell button. Fill it in. This way you'll get notifications of when I'm doing more videos or have put out newer videos. And... You can see what's going on, but really, I appreciate everybody watching. What can I say? Thank you. Thank you very much, and keep on modeling.